Today's lesson is a quick one using rates of change that we've been studying so far to solve problems. And we can do this because we can do it to use things such as verify maximum and minimum points on a function. Um, we can use it if you are trying to solve a problem related to things discussed in the previous lesson. So ideas such as the flow of water or describing motion. It's going to take this a little bit further. And it's going to look a lot at the horizontal tangent. And we know that a minimum max occurs when the tangent is horizontal. So it has to have a slope of zero. So we can use this fact to verify things. So when you're doing your problems, I want you to kind of think through in a three-step way. Always read the problem. And take the time to reread it. Make sure you understand the problem. And take note of important things. Maybe you underline or highlight, or maybe it's just to jot down the important points as the first part of your solving. And then choose an appropriate method to solve. So the, you learn methods like following interval, preceding interval, tensive interval, and quotient difference. And I would say that if you're given an equation, the quotient difference is, or the difference quotient is the first uh, one I would think to use. It uses the function notation right in it and is going to give us an accurate answer every time. It also will lead you towards the uh, methods that you're going to use if you take calculus. So it's a good one to practice. Okay, so we're going to do an example problem. Verify that a maximum point occurs at x equals negative 3 for the function j at x equals negative x squared minus 6x minus 4. So I'm going to use the method as discussed. I've written the formula for the slope here is j at a plus h minus j at a all over h, where h is a small positive or small negative number. And in our problem, we can look back and, and reread a little bit, and we can see that we're looking to verify a max point at x equals negative 3. So we're looking to verify that the slope is 0 at x equals negative 3. So that means that my a value is negative 3 in this case. So I can plug in a is 3 into this. So I want to solve j at 3 plus h minus j at 3 all over h. So I have negative 3 plus h squared minus 6 times 3 plus h minus 4. And then I'm subtracting j at 3. And if you evaluate j at 3, we get, uh, let's see, negative 9. And, oh, sorry, that's supposed to be negative 3. My bad. Okay, that's better. And so j at negative 3, so we have negative 9 plus 18, so that's positive 9 minus 4, so that's 5. So this will be minus 5 here, all over h. Which, now we'll have to do some expanding. So I'll get negative h squared plus 6h minus 9 minus 6h. Plus 9 and then minus 4 minus 5, that's minus 9. H so I have negative h squared and we have plus 6h minus 6h so these subtract out and I have minus 9 and plus 9 here
So all I have is this. That's over H. And if I want to simplify this a little bit, I can write it as minus h minus 9 over h. So we're going to try this for uh, h equals 0 0.01. Oops, I just found a little mistake in what I'd done earlier. Obviously, negative 6 times negative 3 is not positive 9. It's actually positive 18, so this should be plus 18, which means we have a minus 9, a minus 9, and a plus 18, so all of this subtracts to be 0, and this should just be negative h squared over h, and then just negative h in our answer. So we'll try h with our small positive number, and we end up getting a slope of negative 0 0.01. So, in other words, just to the right of the value has a negative slope, which makes sense because we're trying to prove a maximum on a quadratic, right? And we know that a maximum on a quadratic looks like this. So to the right has negative slopes, and to the left has positive. So we can see this makes sense so far. Then h equals negative 0 0.01 gives us m equals positive 0 0.01 right, because we're down here, slope is negative h. And so it appears that the closer we get to 0 with h, the closer m is going to get to 0. So therefore, at x equals negative 3, the slope appears to be 0. And the neat thing about this one here is that with, with this equation that we got in the end, we actually could plug in h for 0. We don't have to use the small numbers because this time, you know, we actually get 0. So slope equals negative 0 is what you get when you plug it in, which is just 0. And usually why we can't plug in h equals 0 is because you end up with some equation with, you know, with a function on the top and it's over h still, and you can't get rid of that h, and we're not allowed to divide by 0. So that's why usually we don't do that. But in this case, we can actually verify very specifically that the slope is 0.